And I told her, I don't care if he is her husband right now. It's time to rise from the grave, pour yourself a cup, and enjoy the coffee crypt. Voices from the Mausoleum is brought to you by the You Run Podcast Network and yourunpodcast.com. And a very special thank you to our Patreon subscribers. Be sure to check out the Girl in the Gay podcast, a bi-monthly podcast where Beck and Jay discuss their favorite movies, available on Apple Podcasts. Good, good morning, morning, and welcome to another episode of The Coffee Crypt. Uh, our guest host for this week, uh, welcome back to the channel, Mr. Squall. I was going to duck out of frame and then come back in, but I was like, wait, is there one more? At? Nope. Oh, never mind. Oh, so yeah, intro, <laughs> ad. <laughs> yeah, What's up? Couple. As the channel grows, we've been kind of, things have been changing in terms of our intros. As you can tell, it's kind of early, not fully firing on all cylinders up here yet. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I hope everyone's having a great weekend so far. Uh, a few trailers to talk about, some news. Uh, Squall, what you drinking this morning? So it's funny that I'm on a show called The Coffee Crypt because I am notoriously anti-coffee. Mm -hmm. I am drinking some... Or Nightmare on Elm Street, I was like, which one do I have? G Fuel, which is actually pretty good. This isn't an ad. This isn't a plug. I just really good. <laughs> Not brought to you by that. So what, wait, what is G Fuel? Uh, it stands for Gamer Fuel, but I'm going to call this one like Gore Fuel. Um, uh -huh. But it's, it's a zero sugar um, energy supplement. It's really good. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm technically not really drinking coffee this morning either. Oh. I got my little tea. It's going. Um, so sometimes we mix it up. Yeah. But I am um, drinking out of our official Coffee Crip March mm. mug. I love that. Um, so you can get that at our store. The link is below if you are so inclined. <laughs> um, but yeah, so let's just dive into some trailers. Our first one um, is a film called The Watchers. Mm. So this is uh, going to be brought to us by Warner Brothers coming out June seventh uh it is produced not directed by m night Shyamalan, um but it is directed by his daughter uh mm -hmm. ishana night Shyamalan. and i don't know if this is her feature debut um i think it might be i uh have not really been following as much of m night's stuff in a while i went to see knock at the cabin because I wanted to support a queer horror film, unfortunately. They, they changed the book. Like, the book was really good, and the story was really good, and they changed it. Ugh, I don't know if you read yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, I did not get a chance to go read the book yet. Um, I just was so hurt by the movie. <laughs> um, and I had hopes for it, because it was based on a book. I'm thinking, okay... So the groundwork is there. You know, he doesn't really have to do much to stick the landing. Alas, there was what it was. Um, you know, I'm hoping his daughter sort of um, has her own thumbprint on uh, the stories. I know this is also based on a book. What's what's her name? Ishana Knight Shyamalan. Oh, it should have been like Shana Morning Shyamalan or something. <laughs> missed opportunity. <laughs> True, very true. Well, is Knight a middle name or is that also a last name? If your last name is Knight Shyamalan, that's cool as hell. <laughs> I don't yeah, I don't who know that. because I, who I don't know many people who take on middle names as yeah. well as last names. Yeah, like what? Where, where, where did middle names even come from? Because it was just like last name, first name, last name. It was just first name for the longest time. Like I'm John, but then mm -hmm. now the government makes me call you Johnson. Because you're my son. So where yeah. Did, where did where did Knight come from? I don't know. Middle names are that's it. That is interesting. I mean, I know like religiously, there's like your like for Christianity. I mean, I went through you know confirmation, so I have like a confirmation name. Not that I use it. <laughs> it's like when you're on the phone. Yeah, oh, hold on. I got a confirmation name here for you. <laughs> um but so the watchers follows mina a 28 year old artist uh, who gets stranded in an expansive untouched forest in western ireland uh she finds shelter but is unknowingly becomes trapped alongside three strangers who are watched and stalked by a mysterious creature each night 
Sounds like an M. Night Shyamalan movie. Yeah. <laughs> For sure, um, I I uh, I audibly laughed I, <laughs> in the trailer because there's the scene where uh, is it Dakota Fanning? She turns to the camera and she goes, "Don't you want to know what they are?" As if like <laughs> telling the audience watching, like, "Come on, don't you want to like come and see and find out what the the twist is?" I know. Um, I thought that was really funny. <laughs> it's very on brand uh, for at least for her father's stuff. Mm -hmm. um you know and i mean aesthetically like i love the shots in the woods i love the shot like, just the, the idea of the two-way mirror and it, it it you know you got some like weird witchy stuff going on as well mm -hmm. possibly um but yeah it's just sort of like i i just fear it's gonna get very convoluted as far as the what they are kind of thing i mean We've had what the village, we've had like six cents, you had signs, Sorry. old. Which one? Old. Old. Is I did not see old. Yeah. I, <laughs> I mean, it was happening. Wasn't that also Shyamalan? Happening, yeah. It was uh, the wind was the the monster. No, I don't know. Right. Well, it was the tree. It was the trees, no? It was the earth. Oh yeah, wasn't it like the wind? I thought it was like the Earth in general. It was like the Earth, really, and it was like I, a planet. I was, I was. It was during the alcohol crypt. I watched that one. Um, <laughs> I <don't laughs> I'm pretty sure it was like the planet fighting back because we were destroying the planet. So they I were like releasing things to kill us off. Maybe I just remember Mark Wahlberg's awful performance, where like the old woman's just like, "Are you trying to kill me?" And he goes, "No." <laughs> so good uh that's the one thing you can trust with like an m night Shyamalan produced is there's going to be some sort of like unintentional like comedy element oh in all the scare like the signs signs was really good because signs was like meant to be funny mm -hmm. and so it kind of took all that edge away and then it also gave you the scares but yeah. uh the village had some good moments too <laughs> Village had some fun stuff in it. Um, but it's just as far as like, the, yeah, those classic twists that like, you know, I I, I, I I say this every time Shyamalan comes up where it's like, I think, you know, he got so big because of the sixth sense and signs that it was just sort of hard to come back from that or like top, top what he's done or there was pressure to top a twist like the sixth sense and it being so like critically acclaimed and I think it's just like the idea of just like, you know, succeeding too early. Sure. And I mean, uh, studio meddling has a lot to do with that, where they're trying to tote it's the yeah. next one of those. Yeah. When like he did Unbreakable in between, you know, sure. Science and Sixth Sense. And while that does have a twist, it's really like a character drama focused mm -hmm. piece that that's my favorite film by him. It might even be like top five film. Um, and then, you know, he did like Avatar The Last Airbender, which. Yeah. Like he he tried to he tried to branch out and do some other things. He oh oh the visit's really good. Did we talk about that one already? I, no no that's like the grandparent one, right? Yeah, I I I low key really liked that one. That was I was like, he's back. Like it's not a big twist. Like mm -hmm. it wasn't like the entire turn point of the movie. Like there's still a lot of good stuff to support it. That even if you saw the twist coming, like it's still really engaging. Yeah. Oh, and you know what? I didn't hate um, Devil devil oh yeah i didn't see that. is that the one on the elevator the elevator one i didn't hate that one either actually um you know i he, when he's allowed to sort of do his thing and like you said i think studio meddling is huge um that's been in the in the conversation a lot lately there's another i'm not gonna i'm not gonna talk about youtuber uh, drama but there was a youtuber that taught, talked about why he doesn't want to bash movies anymore and blah, 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 blah. and a big part of the conversation was about studio meddling as well and it's so hard to make films and you know art versus money and which i think is because it was the conversation was like around like madam web oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. but um and i and i get it right i think i think m.i Shyamalan is sort of that like that that's sort of where a lot of his art falters is probably studio meddling but like in the case of like you no know, i hate you know what? This is about his daughter. I don't want to, you know, lean on him too much. This is about Ishara, and I want to give her a chance. I, I really, you know, I don't think um, it's fair to necessarily judge her based on her dad. Mm -hmm. So, that being said, this is what June seventh. I'm definitely going to check it out. I want to give her a fair shake. Mm -hmm. 
I am. Um, I'm. I'm really interesting. Like to see. I. I let me start over. I'm a really big fan of like movie trailers. You know, I went and did like movie stuff for like a big portion of my life. And that was a, one of the like driving forces was movie trailers. I just loved watching trailers sometimes more than the movies, like the way that they could advertise it and market like a horrible, horrible movie. And you're like, that looks so cool. We got to go see that. And then, you know, the trailer's just the best part. Um, it's fun to see like all the trends like inception brought forth the brom yeah in, like, every movie and a24 is able to take these really good movies and market them in really weird like ways where they don't tell you much which does not work for a trailer unless it's like uh, you know, like Titanic's coming back out in theaters, you know, like you already, you kind of have an understanding, but A24, the movies are so good that they can literally show you anything in the trailer. And it's like, okay, yeah, it's A24. This should be fun. This should be good. But now a lot of other, you know, I don't know if, is this A24? Um, no, this is Warner Brothers. That's what I was going to say. Like, it feels very like um, cut by like the crew that does A24 films. Yeah. I don't know if the movie's going to hold up as well as like one of those pictures but they're still trying to advertise it like that. They're trying to capitalize on like how they do that. So it was just interesting to see, like I was going to say it was a big studio picture trying to market it very minimally. And I don't know how successful that's going to be because a lot of those early reviews are going to come in and that's really going to decide if I don't, I don't know what I was watching. I watched that whole trailer and I was like, Okay. <laughs> it looks, yeah, it definitely has a bit of an art house cut trailer, right? Mm-hmm. For sure. Um, and it's and probably really bring up A24 because our next trailer is also going to be an A24, is, is an A24 mm-hmm. film. Um, that you watch this trailer and you're like, I don't know what the hell is going on. But I'm um, so excited for it. That's, what, that's the thing. <laughs> but it's really cool. And so to segue in, uh, that is, I saw the TV glow uh, <laughs> from A24 and starring Justice Smith, who I absolutely adore i think he's phenomenal um but this is directed by jane uh, schoenbrunn i think i'm saying it right um and so yeah there, it really no idea what the hell's going on with this movie so the, it, it, it's some friends who are talking about the pink opaque which is an old tv show that they used to watch or one of them used to watch and it's about you know people fighting monsters very buffy-esque Mm-hmm. where it's like four kids but maybe a little too scary for kids um so maybe a little goosebump ask maybe it's uh, i don't know so we'll, i mean that's more your wheelhouse right <laughs> um but then it's yeah i mean it's really just sort of it looks like you know we, we're seeing some scenes of them as kids there's them as teens early 20s maybe uh there one of them maybe goes missing uh, there's some trippy scenes with like heads and televisions and creepy sort of grotesque yeah, monsters. I don't know. It looks sort of and... what? Have you seen the movie Videodrome? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's that's kind of like the first like immediate sort of connection I had. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, it's kind of like a new age Videodrome. Cronenberg. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, yeah. I 100 percent can see that. It yeah, it, it but it's so funny because it almost because it'll cut it'll have like those that Cronenberg esque vibe, and then it'll sort of have this coming of age sort of teen angsty vibe too, mm-hmm. um, and it kind of seems to go between the two, and I feel like that's going to be very intentional. I think mm-hmm. this is going to be a genre bending kind of movie, um, mm-hmm. and I love to see a twenty four really branching out uh, in in terms of their genre and what they're doing now. It's um it's funny that you mentioned like the genre bending, like the coming of age angsty teen movie mixed with something else. Um 2017's Power Rangers did it really well with like what I if agree like Marvel superhero style. Um and I've I've noticed a few other things do that too. And it's like Stranger Things even kind of did it Ooh. with you know, these kids that are you know experiencing all sorts of awful things in Indiana, which that should be your first clue. Um Shout out to all my Indiana people. <laughs> oh, I mean, have you ever seen, ever watched the show Erie, Indiana? Yeah, of course. I love Erie, Indiana. There you go. Um, but I, I feel like giving A24 all the credit is really hard to do because they're in some ways producing some of these movies and in some other fashions, they are just finding these. And They're, they're distributors, right? I mean, look at, uh, talk to me, A24 didn't make that movie. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, and they funded it. Yeah. Was that- but they like they have such a finger on the pulse of like what is invocative, like what's gonna like really, you know, resonate with people, what's gonna yeah. do like the witch, you know, like some of the earlier ones, like love them or hate them, you you're gonna remember them. And I think like it's crazy that so many other bigger you know companies have probably passed on these and they you know pick them up and they become like you know household names by the end of the year and i feel like this one is definitely going to push that i i feel really strongly about kind of the visuals and the story and just hopefully that you know it all holds up and ties together but the trailer really looked good and it was really selling it yeah, this is going to have people talking. I think I saw one one YouTube comment. It's like, this is going to be one of those, you love it or you hate it. It's going to be 100 on Rotten Tomatoes or like 30 on Rotten Tomatoes. Sure. It's going to be very divisive. And I'm I'm here for that. Before I watched the trailer, the title like reminded me of like when I was little and I used to like sneakily watch television. And like I was like, oh, they saw the glow of the TV. Mm. Oh, they caught me every time. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Maybe it's an idea for a future uh, novel. Maybe I, I had to like fashion like a blanket, and I stretched it across the room so that the. <laughs> yeah. uh, for me, it was sneaking episodes of Nip Tuck or something. I'm oh like, yeah, I FX. Watch this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that is coming out. Oh, did I even? Oh, did I miss the uh, release date on that one? That is. May 3rd. May 3rd. Okay. May 3rd. Um, our next trailer, not particularly horror, but I like to include sci-fi fantasy at, on occasion because I feel like they often dip into the horror realm. Uh, I feel like you need horror to have compelling sci-fi and fantasy sometimes. Mm-hmm. So that is the Borderlands trailer. Now, are you are you familiar with the games? Have you played the Borderlands games? Uh, I used to, I had a Let's Play channel way back in the day and mm-hmm. um, my co-host forced me to play these games not the biggest fan i like i like the look of it i like the Mm -hmm. genre but i'm just not a big like shooter game fan sure and i feel like it was trying so hard to be like fun cutesy kind of like ripping off um portal was really big at the time kind of like with those like sassy characters Mm -hmm. but no when i i saw this trailer i was like that is absolutely 100 the game um Interesting casting, though. You know? I love this cast. Are you kidding me? I, I mean, Kate Blanchett in that wig can snatch my wig. I don't care. She's great. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. I, this era of Jamie Lee Curtis, I uh, is just doing everything for me right now. Like, yes, of course, we all stand Laurie Strode. I mean, she's you know total sex icon, eighties, um, nineties, but this like quirky character thing that she's doing now like i love deer drip a beard drip with all my heart from mm-hmm. uh everything everywhere all at once mm-hmm. um this this i think this just fits perfectly for her um yes, i play the in. games these are some of my husband's favorite games like mm-hmm. the humor just hits for us uh if the movie nails it we'll see i it, it just on the first glance with the trailer um jack black is claptrap i'm here for that as well um the crapping joke at the end got me i mean i know it's stupid poop humor but i'm like all right you know what i'm a kid sometimes and they got um they got the young girl who was in the barbie movie which i was like she's really good in this yeah she Super looks like she's gonna be fun in like another really big blockbuster film it gives me guardians of the galaxy vibes yes and there was there was a few films that came out a year or two after the wake of the first one mm-hmm. that were really trying to touch into that. Like I know Suicide Squad's marketing really tried to cater it more towards that Guardian style. Yeah. Um. So I wonder if it actually like will be able to kind of stand on its own, or if it's going to rely a little bit too heavily on sort of something that it wants to be that was very successful. Yeah. Well, it's hard because Borderlands is pre Guardians, the first one, mm-hmm. anyway, and it, and it has this vibe. So, but it almost feels like it needs to be Guardians. It's right. It's sort of like came before, but then also needs to kind of. It's like Guardians and Fury Road kind of like come together. Yeah. 
in this like colorful, weird, like hopefully really fun, you know, two hours. Yeah, but it, I mean, beyond that, right? We have um, Edgar Ramirez, uh, who's great. We have Gina Gershon, mm-hmm. um, who was in. Um, so I'm doing like a Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon. We all know her from Bound with our Jennifer Tilly, or you know, our uh, Miss Tilly. We do adore here on this channel. Uh, but yeah, I, I, you know, I'm very excited. Um, Kevin Hart, you know, so mm-hmm. it'll be fun. And that is coming out. Um, it says coming soon on the YouTube page, but I know we have a date for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm like totally. Eh. It's probably in the summer sometime. It's it, this is definitely going to be a summer movie for gonna, sure. Like, you got to walk by a subway and they're going to be advertising it. Uh huh. Oh yeah. There's going to be a five dollar foot long Borderland yeah, we'll crossover subway ads for that movie. I was just going to do a quick. This is what's great about having a computer. We can kind of do a live. I don't have a, a man at the chair to Google things for me, so we do all that. You know, we all, we do all that. <laughs> um, it is going to be August 9th. So oh, indeed. Okay. So a late summer movie. Yeah. Hmm. And that's Warner Bros. that put that out. This is Lionsgate. Lionsgate. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So speaking, of, I know you mentioned the Power Rangers movie. That was yeah, same people. Yeah, I'm getting all my like uh, companies mixed up. Yeah. So um, our last trailer is uh, so a an indie filmmaker, uh, Alice Mayo McKay's T Blockers. So this one is going to be on Bloody Disgusting TV. Uh, I actually got to catch T Blockers at a Brooklyn Horror Film Festival in October. Uh, it's a fun movie. Um, this is their third feature, I think. I did not get to see their other films. Uh, but so T Blockers is this kind of weird, grotesque, very queer, celebratory horror film with a lot of just like ooey gooey. Um, it's just a very sticky, gross film. <laughs> nice um so yeah i mean it just follows um a group of queer friends who uh are surrounded by these fantastical sci-fi happenings people are getting possessed you know sort of like invasion of the body snatchers kind of movie mm-hmm. um and the trans heroes have to save the day and it's nice. it, it, it's a lot of fun it's it's very it leans into the b b movie um, you know, say, it looks like it's got like, um, like a very old filter almost mm-hmm. on it. Like it, in some ways I was like, oh, this looks really good. And in some ways I'm like, wait, this kind of looks like just like a found footage, like, you know, camera from like the turn of the century. Yeah. It's um, very low budge. This is a very low budge movie. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think you have to try to take that with, as you watch this, um, but it was funny, yeah. This was just one of the selections, you know. Brooklyn Horror, just a shout out. I talk about that festival all the time, just because some great movies came out of that. I got to interview some of the directors out of it, um, but you know, they do a really good job at highlighting uh, up and coming filmmakers, queer filmmakers, um, yeah, you know, uh, you know, black filmmakers, Asian filmmakers. Like they just sort of go, they just make sure like a lot of voices are heard, and it, it's incredible. Um, so yeah, no, I, I don't know if we have a date for this one. Um, yeah, but it is going to be streaming on bloody disgusting TV, which is, I'm happy it got picked up on there. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so, but if you haven't, so, um, Alice McKay, uh, was the filmmaker behind so van and bad girl boogie. Boogie. I haven't seen either of those though. Yeah. yeah. So those are the other films that they did. Mm Mm-hmm. But yeah, so you know, any other thoughts on the trailer? I know no, I saw the movie. I don't want to spoil much, though. Yeah, it it again doesn't really give much away. Like a lot of these trailers, other than the Borderlands, um, kind of keep a lot closer to the chest, you know. Mm-hmm. Which I think, again, goes back to that A twenty four marketing style of showing you but not showing you. Yeah. So. Yeah, you know what? You got to just sort of, you know, a little, a little tease, get get someone in, you know, get you in the door. It's hard for marketing, right? Because it's like you, you know, I hate when they show too much in trailers for sure, but they know yeah. that's how they get people in seats. But I'm like, not showing a lot gets me in seats, but I guess not everyone's like that. So, 
I don't want to watch a trailer and then know the whole movie, you know? That's how I felt about um, uh, The Black Phone. Yeah. I liked the movie, but mm-hmm. I would have liked it more if I didn't know every beat. Yeah. If they could have just, like, shown it as, like, a kid getting kidnapped and he has to try to get away. That looks fun. That looks interesting. They literally showed, like... The ghosts and how they help him and what I mean, like what in the like they showed the whole movie. I think the last like great trailer that's come out is unfortunately Star Wars: The Rise of Skywalker. Like that one, it it hides how bad that movie is so perfectly. It's so <laughs> like, encompassing. It shows you all this stuff but tells you nothing. Um, more trailers like that. I think. You know, less movies like that, but more yeah. trailers like that. Yeah, if you could like take like a really good movie and make a trailer like that for it. Hey, I'm one of the few people I love The Last Jedi, but Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, you I don't like need to redo Skywalker. it. Just that's a pandering movie. If we're going to talk about pandering movies, you know. Yeah, I mean they didn't pander too hard because they could have given Finn a lightsaber, but instead he's on a creature on a star destroyer anyway this isn't star wars <laughs> it could be a whole other thing i used yeah. to do star wars content i left that con- uh that fandom <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> real fast after the last <laughs> Jedi. so anyway i mean i'm still a fan it's just you know anywho that's it for trailers Ooh. and star wars and so star wars. that brings us to uh our news and trending and what's going on um in the horror verse uh we got our first image of bill skarsgård in the crow remake reboot readaptation i guess it's not really a remake because it's a comic so it's really just another adaptation i kind of make it akin to like broadway revivals it's not really a remake you're just adapting it again mm-hmm. and so but anywho this is making a splash you know, you got people like me. I'm just, I'm just thirsting over Bill Skarsgård. So, you know, I'm in on it. I'm also not one of those people where I'm like only one person ever can play a character. You know, especially if it's an adaptation. I mean, mm-hmm. Bill brought it home as Pennywise. You know, I mean, why can't he bring it home as the Crow? But anyway, there's people who are very attached to that '90s film, and uh, you know that first iteration of the crow and, and and what he brought to the role. But what are your, what are your thoughts? I mean, this is just an image. So, I mean, there's not much to say over an image. But. Yeah. They released like what, like three images. They have the one of him in the mirror, him kissing someone through like a sheet. Um, mm. I didn't know it was a comic and that might be just something I never knew. I, I saw the movie once or twice um, and it never really stuck with me. I wasn't a huge fan of it. Obviously, really terrible what happened during the filming of that. And I think everyone's going to kind of just point to that and why that one would be superior. Even if this one does turn up and is really good. I also mm-hmm. look at like the director's past movies. So like in that article, they like list all of the the movies that this director has done. And I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't have a lot of, a lot of hopes. I know Bill's going to be great in it. Cause like barbarian for like the mm-hmm. 20 minutes he's in that movie, he kills it. The trailer makes you like I turned off the trailer halfway yeah. through because I was like, I'm sold. And I thought he was going to be the bad guy the whole movie. And I was like, I was so happy with that. And just everything that I see, you know, the scars guards in they're they're on their game. Um, but I just I'm not a big fan of the crow. So I don't understand why that's gone. You know, an adaptation that like that one's come around. I know they've talked about it for a while. Um but that seems weird. That seems like let's remake the page master. <laughs> well, you know what? It's an opportunity. You know, Ancient and I were talking about this. It's like you can go back and make a movie that maybe isn't that great, you know, mm-hmm. and I might get hate comments for saying that the original Crow's not great either. But, um, you know, because uh, we were recently talking, they're going to do another remake of The Blob. And I'm yeah. like, that's fine, actually, because. I don't have an affinity for the original or that 80s remake. I love Steve McQueen. There's an opportunity. I mean, good, but like, you know, (laughs) it's not like something where I'm like, you could never touch this. You know, I think we all have those movies. Like, like I was very, um, no surprise, was very hard on the Poltergeist remake or not hard, but I should say like my eye was very, you know, tuned into that one. But we all have those things that that are are special to us. So like, we're going to 
pay a little more attention and maybe be a little more critical. Um, you know, for the crow, it's like that for me. It's like, you know what, my, this might be a good opportunity for me to really appreciate that story in a different way. Sure. You know, can, yeah, can I, you do something new, something different? Right. I totally buy to that. Like where take, take a movie that might have like a cool idea or a cool premise, or it's based on something that wasn't quite a good movie. Like, Captain America, you know, they made a 90s movie so they could retain the rights. Horrible. Don't watch it. But then, you know, they came and had another one uh, by the guy who did like the Rocketeer. Right, there you go. So I I agree, but I also understand why they do it. Just because it's, you say the crow and most people, you know, over the age of 15 know what you're talking about. 15 is about like that sweet age where everyone's kind of a little edgy and they want to watch, you know, like those types of films and so i feel like the crow was popping up when i was like you know mid high school a lot of people were like oh have you seen the crow he died when they made this movie and he haunts it and it's like what um <laughs> but like you have that with a lot of movies like poltergeist like they were using like you know real human remains and it right. cursed <laughs> the whole franchise um the exorcist was cursed i mean you know, you know there's a lot of those movies with that the, the little in in lore right yeah but like i i think if you take a really good movie or a really well-loved movie make it into something completely new or make it like a continuation without it being too pandering like the new exorcist movie i wanted to like just everything they did about it i was like cool it's it's not a it's not a remake that's great because we've seen reagan we've seen all this like let's do something yeah. new with it um but then it was <laughs> super pandery and you know just it missed the mark for me personally but i feel like if you have something like the crow which again i'm probably gonna have to rewatch it yeah it wasn't it wasn't one of my favorite movies but i know so many people who love it and i hope that they give it the chance it deserves if it's deserving of it like yeah. um let the right one in yeah um that one that remake I wanted nothing to do with it. I had a teacher in college who was like, this is garbage. This is BS. How do they remake this amazing movie? And um, Let Me In was really well done. Like yeah. for an American adaptation, it was fantastic. So it can go either way. I know. Really. I mean, just talking about the past works, right? I mean, Ghost in the Shell, right? Like, okay. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. <laughs> um, but. All right, so let's move on to our next story. Um, there is just a very brief announcement trailer that there's going to be a Paranormal Activity video game. Yes! <laughs> so I'm actually very excited for that. I think that's going to be a fun idea. Mm -hmm. uh, probably, a, so it's by the people who did uh, the Mortuary Assistant, which I haven't played yet, but looks terrifying. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and I'm wondering if it's going to be a little bit of that, a little bit of, are we going to do like a Five Nights at Freddy's sort of take where you're watching footage happen? Like, I don't know, right? Like, it, there's a lot of different directions that, that you can go. And I'm probably particularly excited because for our Found Footage Fridays, we are right now doing a franchise retro, like, look back um, at the Paranormal Activity movie. So it's all, like, fresh in my head. Uh, yeah, I don't know. What are your thoughts? Um if it's like the movies, 90% of the game's going to be really boring until like the final night. Um, <laughs> it's just, oh, I saw something there. Oh, yeah. Okay. Got to save my game. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of games nowadays are like, uh, they had like that one, like where you go and like, you know, paranormal investigate like houses. What was that one? Mm -hmm. um, Phasmophobia. That one, Phasmophobia. Phasm we played that. That was super fun. We played that. Like, yeah. um, just, like and it changes up a little bit and a little bit like that so i don't know how they're gonna make it like playable for like more than once or twice unless toby's coming after you in different ways you know or if toby's mixing it up or like that that's that's my only like real like hmm how do you make that work? How do you make it like a phasmophobia where you can literally play it over and over again? And even if you encounter the same sort of phenomenon or specter or demon or whatever, like you can still kind of, you know, play it yeah. like a party game. Um, like Among Us is super huge because it's just an easy to plug in, you know, and you play party game. Like how how do you do that with paranormal activity? 
if you just it's hard yeah i don't know i you know i'm not a big fan of the um sort of what do they call those the uh not asynchronistic they're um on um i forget we go but but it's like dead by daylight the Texas oh. Chainsaw games. It's just yeah. like five people and you have to do different things and you're against the 13th game. Mm. Yeah, I'm not into those. Um, but like if it's like a phasmophobia, right? I think it's about taking that idea, putting the paranormal activity aesthetic on it. Meaning like there's footage that maybe you have to go through. So maybe you're collecting evidence. Maybe it is more of an investigation. So maybe it's a little boring. Maybe, I don't know how they make it exciting. Um, maybe you do it in chapters. You could be like someone that like is brought in because they're experiencing this and you have to like point out things that are changing or like so maybe there's like an investigation point. I could see them maybe doing it in how I would do it maybe is you do it in chapters, right? Maybe you do like, you know, you're doing a couple of nights, you're just sort of like going through footage together, setting up evidence. Maybe you have to get it at a certain point in the house, like sort of how you set up phasmophobia, you investigate. And then maybe the next chapter is you actually go in and you have to maybe you're experiencing the phenomenon as you're walking around the house. And then maybe then you kind of get like the final chapter, which is where all the shit hits the fan and it's a little scarier and a little more intense. So maybe you do it in like waves, you know, I don't know. It's a pass for me if they don't have the Xbox connect sensor in play. I'd really um, just watch that one for, uh, for, for, for pound footage. Um, I, we should have these was, mother in law. <laughs> she had never <laughs> seen these before. And so we told her that this was real. Like this was actually found footage. And so she watched the whole paranormal activity one, just like, what happened to them? I was like, well, they did, they did find more footage. There is a second one that they put out. And she was like, no. And so we watched all the second one and she was just like, it happened to her sister too. I was like, <laughs> hold on. They, they went in and they found in the basement, even more tapes that this was happening to them when they were children. And she was like, nah, -uh. she, we had her for like three movies that this was a real thing that happened. <laughs> so good <laughs> that's amazing yeah. oh man no i appreciate that it's, it's hard to sort of uh really redo that with like the blair witch i think you think you, you tricked a lot of people with that one mm -hmm. hard to, i think we're all a little privy now <laughs> but it's great that you were able to at least for a few movies have i ever mentioned on this channel like going to see paranormal activity one when i was young you're saying when you were young. How old are you? Aren't you? Are we the I same age? I was in high school. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. I was in college. Okay. That was like half my life ago. Um, wow. But like, I was, you know, 09 was a long time ago now. You know? I was scared. I was like, oh, God, maybe this is like a really scary movie because I'd watched all these movies. Um, the whole theater was just cracking up the whole time. And the very end, when. Um, I forget what his name is he gets like thrown into the camera and she's just standing there in the hallway this guy in the back of the theater is sitting there with his girlfriend he just goes man what a bitch <laughs> and that, that's that, every time someone says paranormal activity that's what i hear in my head amazing amazing i had a fun experience nothing quite as funny i so i i bought into the hype it was oh nine my freshman year of college and they were just doing that really cool marketing where you can like request mm -hmm. it in your city, get early screenings, all that stuff. So I so I got early tickets to see it in the in in Manhattan. So me and a couple of my friends took the train down uh, over, and um, yeah, it was like right on Thirty Fourth Street, one of like the AMC theaters right there. Line down the city block. It was packed. People were pumped for this movie. Um, so it was like one of the, it was just like a really fun. It really, I mean, even if it's not one of my favorite movies ever, it's one of my favorite movie going experiences because everyone was just so like, it honestly felt like the opening of Scream 2. Yeah. yeah. It was Where just like I'm that. Like, like the energy was that palpable, you know? I I have such an affinity for those movies. I love the Paranormal Activity movies because without them, we would not have Blumhouse. Like we owe so much of our current horror sphere based on those movies with Jason Blum producing them and just making boatloads of money that he can throw money at anything. And then a 24 comes in and kind of gives them a good run for their money. So they have to kind of keep, you know, upping the ante. Mm -hmm. uh, and I talked Paramount. about this on found footage. If you don't know, it actually all goes to Spielberg too. Cause Spielberg oh, was really? the one Spielberg saw the original cut Chandler's of list? the o <laughs> seven one. And he was like, okay, this is how you'd make it better. Mm -hmm. What did you, you say? I said Schindler's List. Does it? How far back does this go? 
Oh no no no! He saw the original. <laughs> he saw the original cut of the 07 version of it, mm-hmm. and uh, he was like, "This is how you make it better." And he kind of gave them direction on redoing that ending, and that's the whole reason why there's a franchise. <laughs> nice. nice. Yeah, what yeah, was yeah. he doing in 07 that was more important than directing Paranormal Activity? I don't know. What was Spielberg doing in 07? I have no idea. Is he still reeling from Bicentennial Man? Was that even him? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Now I'm going to have to go through a whole rabbit hole. AI? Man, he did so uh, many movies that Spielberg couldn't. That's crazy. Yeah. He did Schindler's. He did AI. Hook. He's one of my favorites for a reason. Cooper <laughs> really gang ho to do a Peter Pan adaptation. <laughs> Oh man. So our next story uh brings us to one of my favorite modern horror franchises is the X franchise. Uh so we're as we are still eagerly waiting for a Maxine trailer. Mm-hmm. Whenever we're getting it, I don't know. Uh Ty West, you know, made some interesting comments where he has an idea for a possible fourth movie um and beyond, possibly. Um for the franchise and i don't know what they might do i mean if that's a spoiler for maxine's fate in maxine if she survives or what's going on there but i'd be curious i mean i love that every entry in this film takes place in a different decade in a different era and i would love like if ever this franchise just sort of maybe follows i mean yeah kind of follows this person's life in a different era which would be kind of cool um it's you know, dark. I mean, yeah, it's like the horror WandaVision, right? Yeah. I'm digging it. Um, you know, yeah, no, I love X. I mean, I just sort of I, I love the 70s sort of grindy kind of aesthetic. Um, the callback to like Texas Chainsaw, but also like taking a 70s um kind of sexual revolution approach to talking about like how we still view sexuality today, and then really bringing that back to the 20s. Um, 30s or whatever with Pearl. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, just so I I adore these movies. And um, yeah, I mean, as long as Maxine is great, which I have no doubt that it will be, um, I'm open for more. Yeah. I um I haven't think? seen Pearl yet. But would you would you say it's worth it? I should invest the time. Oh well, yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> if, you, I want... if you love I was going to say, if you love actors who, like, chew up scenery and, like, uh-huh. meaty monologues and some campy, it just campy action, and it's it's so much fun. I love Pearl. I, I watched X, and I was like, that was fun. That was interesting. And then it took, like, a year or two until, like, my wife and I finally sat down and watched it. And I was kind of like, ooh, there's a lot of nudity, you know. Um, but she enjoyed it, and we were like, we should watch Pearl sometime. And then we've just never gotten around to it but if you think it's yeah pearl um scales it back in terms Mm -hmm. of sex like it's there um Mm -hmm. but pearl definitely turns it like tones it down because it's a little bit more of um where you know where x is about liberation um pearl is very much about repression sure um and 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 it's really interesting um i i just think mia god's a phenomenal actor um I know there's a lot of stuff coming out of the Maxine set where she supposedly like curb stomped a dude. <laughs> so oh, I don't know. I, we haven't heard anything else since then. It's just so Gorilla Mark. I'm waiting to hear more. I have no, no idea what. I mean, it almost sounds like Maxine as a character would curb yeah. stomp somebody. So maybe actually. Look, when no. Tom Cruise broke his foot doing that jump in Mission Impossible 5 or 6 or whatever number it was. Everybody was like, we got to go see that movie because you can see it break in the movie. And they told you it would. And so everyone's like, oh, you know, maybe something like that. Right, right. Maybe. maybe. Recommend Pearl. Um, You don't have to see Pearl to see Maxine just because it's a prequel. Um, Mm -hmm. But I definitely think Pearl enhances X and vice versa. Um, Although I'm assuming... Now, I don't know if they're going to reference Pearl and Maxine. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that they still need to talk about because like uh, Maxine is like the daughter of like a like extremist Christian preacher, and like there's a lot that they sort of hinted at that I'm very curious if they bring into Maxine. Um, 
if she kind of addresses her past and what that's all about. Um, but yeah, we'll see. And the cast. I mean, we got Kevin Bacon, Halsey. I'm very Giancarlo Esposito. I'm very excited for vaccine. So I yeah. say that a million times on this channel, but <laughs> <laughs> take a shot. Every time you... <laughs> it, it could be, it really could be a drinking game. So our next story, another remake to talk about. They're looking at redoing American Psycho. No, <laughs> that's uh, what I have. Really one other ones too, and the Dead Zone. No, <laughs> so that's yeah. So that's Lions Gate. You know, <clears throat> I know there there was a sequel to American Psycho, but <clears throat> that I did not see. Yeah, number two wasn't it like directed DVD or something. Yeah, wasn't Jenna Dewan in that? Kevin it's like the butterfly effect too. Who's seen that one? Uh, yeah, no, I did not see that one. But uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I know they did a musical of American Psycho, and that's sort of how you do something fun and different with it. <laughs> Was it Huey Lewis? Like, did they come in and do the music? Like for the Back to the Future musical, they also did American Psycho. I don't know <laughs> who did the music. They just come out on stage. Ah. <laughs> 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 uh, I, I don't know if this is one you need to touch, but I, you know, I think there's a lot of different kinds of psychos these days in a modern era. I mean, this sort of Wall Street sort of guy archetype. I don't know if if it's as relevant these days. Um, I think you could probably put this in more of an influencer kind of context. And mm -hmm. I would be really curious how you modernize this idea of someone who is like this. Um, yeah, because I feel like American Psycho, a lot of people look up to like those, you know, high rollers of New York, like the stockbrokers, the, you know, shakers of the time. Like, yeah, if you made like an influencer, like something that like kids look up to and like they're the ones setting the example, like. I think you have to do that. I don't think you could have someone who's trying to be like um, Bale's version. Yeah. Right. I think I think this because we don't look up to the Wall Street guys anymore. I mean, Occupy Wall Street. I mean, like we don't like these are the guys we hate now. Yeah. So if you want to do something different and sort of say something new, right, you take like some, you know, Instagram model who's traveling the world and taking pictures of their food and drive, you know, like that kind of shit like that, you know, that you can kind of poke at now. They can just um, rename it American. Right. Right. <laughs> I think that's how you have to do it. I mean, yeah. granted, it's a fantastic movie. And do we need to touch it? No, but if but this goes back to my kind of golden rule with remakes. If you can say something new and have a different spin on it, then you are justified. If you're just beat for beat, like Psycho, just doing exactly what was came, what came before, then they were not really justified in making it. A star is born. It's been made like what four times? Each one of them is amazing. Right. Because you're perfect. you're because you're really honing in on the star, right? You're mm -hmm. like you're capitalizing on the person in it. Mm -hmm. Streisand, Gaga, right? You, you Garland, right? Like you are honing in on this person and you're saying something different with them, right? Um, that's your vehicle. You know, so with American Psycho, I don't know. Are you apprehensive? I'm more upset when you talked about the dead zone. The dead zone. Was... I know. I know. Like, how do you? Yeah. Well, how do you this feel about the movie of the Jerry King book? I love the dead zone. Oh, and... Did you like the movie? Like the movie version of it? Oh yeah, I, I got it on 4K. Like I um I lost all my movies last year, and right, right. I've been very apprehensive about rebuying movies. But then Shout said that they're putting uh Cronenberg's dead zone with Christopher Walk and on 4k and I was like yeah I'm there I love that movie and that was like one of the maybe 10 that I've bought in the last year was mm -hmm. I also love the tv show like the Anthony Michael Hall tv show um oh, yeah. I yeah. think that like like we're kind of like the CW Smallville type you know shows fit really well for the dead zone like you kind of could make it uh monster of the week sort of thing mm -hmm. like issue of the week and it was it was really good and i was like i don't know how they're going to make that into a tv show and then they proved me wrong and you have such a perfect movie you have such a perfect tv show 
Make American Psycho a TV show. There we go. That's that's the solution here that I'm getting around to. Yeah. You know, I said never say never. I one of my favorite shows is Bates Motel because I think mm-hmm. that's how you do it. Yeah. That's how you take an iconic character and setting and do something new and refreshing, but also part of the DNA. But they're doing that with Friday the 13th, which I think sounds like an awful idea of like a prequel. <laughs> It's like it works oh, for no. some cases. It's very case by case. Like, yes, I want to know more about Norman. I do not want to know more about <laughs> Jason's awful family life. It's that's a hard one. That's a hard one, right? Because I think with Jason, it, it's hard because you're also having a you're also there's a, he clearly had like like deformities and like unless he's not mentally well. Bad. What? In Manhattan, he's got like a normal face that gets more deformed. Oh. Every time. Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a deep There's. cut. <laughs> but I'm like, are you are are you then going to have like a mentally ill child character, and how do you handle that? Um, I don't know. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's slippery slope. <laughs> it's a slippery slope. I don't. A twenty four is doing it though, so yeah. they could do something interesting with it. I just want I want I want a Friday the 13th that's so far in the future that they have time travel and then they can incorporate all the Friday the 13th into one. I would I would love that show. <laughs> well, I'll just have Ty West and they can do Jason XXX or Jason just, oh, that's a porno. Never mind that. <laughs> he's Uber Jason, like in the last one we saw. So yeah. <laughs> um Jason all right, so that <laughs> That one conversation about American Psycho long, you know, <laughs> became a long-winded tangent, but that's what we're all about tangents here on the Coffee Crypt. Uh, Angel can attest to that. Um, we have a short teaser for a possible, yeah, not possible, a new Ryan Murphy uh, mystery, horror, whatever series on FX called Grotesquerie. Um, I've been done with Ryan Murphy for a while. I'm, I don't know how I feel about this. Um, we don't get, I mean, we just get some like creepy voiceover from a character. Um, just a sort of one, uh, is it, oh, it's, oh, it's Niecy Nash. Okay. So it's Niecy Nash talking, um, just sort of monologuing over the horrors of the world and it's creepy. It's well delivered. I'd like Niecy Nash. I think she's great. Uh, you know, she's done some Ryan Murphy before she was in, um, oh my God, uh, oh my God, the one on, um. Not not FX on Fox uh, with uh, Emma Roberts. I'm not gonna be able to help you here. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh man, why final? No, that wasn't called Final Girls. It was called um, oh crap. I don't remember. People can remind me in the comments. It was two seasons. It was anthology. Jamie Lee Curtis was in it. Um, she was funny in it. That was a quirky character. Um, but anyway. Um, I've just, I'm over Ryan Murphy. Um, I think he's an ideas man. He has a really good premise. And then he just, his attention span just, he go, runs off the rails. He gives it to someone else. And sometimes they do well with it. Sometimes they don't. But he just goes from really hands on to really hands off so fast. Mm-hmm. Um, I, don't, I don't, I don't know. It's very hard. So it's, I guess it's Niecy Nash, Courtney B. Vance, who I do like. Um, and then Leslie Manville from Phantom Thread. Uh, I don't know. I don't. Not, I don't know. What, would you have thoughts? Because I don't want to. I don't want to sit here bash Ryan Murphy for twenty minutes. But <laughs> um, I don't know how how you feel about the American Horror Story series. But I um, I was very invested. Season one. I loved it. Then I hate it. Yeah, I I was like, this is the best show I've ever seen, and I got my mom caught up on it. And we watched the last episode finale together of that season. And we were both like, what the hell was that? <laughs> and we just were like, okay, well, at least season two, they're going to talk about it. They're going to get it. Oh, no, it's different. It's an anthology, yeah. And it just like every season was like that. I was dating a girl who loved it. And so we were watching like, what was it? Season three with the carnival. Um, Four is freak show. Okay, I guess. <laughs> I watched four of these. Things. I was big. I was big in the series for a long time, and then I just mm-hmm. finally had enough of sort of getting disappointed by the endings and just. Yeah, that's that's my big thing. And then um, I just was really put off by Dahmer. 
the the series that came out a few years ago. Oh, I didn't even watch that. It's very well executed, and um, what's his name? Who plays Dahmer? Evan. Oh, uh, Evan Peters. Evan Peters. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I put Emma Roberts and Evan Robert. Uh, Evan they Peters. Yeah, are they? Or they maybe they're still together? I don't know, but they were dating. <laughs> I uh, I I really liked his performance in it. It's great. I don't want to see something that I know the families of the victims are not okay with. Like there is so much you can do, and that's like another thing that I don't care about for remakes is like there are so many other stories out there. All those stories you want to remake are potentially remakes of something else. Like all story is you know the same you know thing over and over again. Make something new. Don't. Mm-hmm. Don't highlight an actual horrible person um, if you can, you know, or make yeah. it make it pointed somewhere different or don't make it all spectacle. You I know? mean, you could like have a Dahmer inspired villain in a movie. Yeah, I mean, easily. Yeah, I mean, there's just so much there. It doesn't have to necessarily be you don't have to reference him or you don't actually have to reference the victims and you don't have to actually like exploit that side of it. Yeah, it was very uh, exploiting of that i um i really liked mine hunters when that was on did oh, you ever see was that, that with murphy no no oh okay because <laughs> I, I was gonna say i like mine hunters yeah that wasn't murphy no 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 i'm like i'm saying like what's good and like that is technically an adaptation of um his books that he wrote like into darkness and about going and talking with these horrible horrible people and mm-hmm. the show is just wonderful like you can have like BTK, you can have all these different murderers and still have that spectacle, but still like have it so pointed elsewhere that it works. Um, so, do oh, I agree? Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. So with Ryan Murphy, I mean, is this something where maybe I watched the pilot? I, don't know, mm-hmm. I might. You know what? What I've started to do is I've I've done this since his uh, NYC, I think. So the last season I watched was the the double feature one, where they was like they they did essentially two seasons in one. Horrible, but anyway, um, so ever since that season, I was like, I'm gonna wait until the whole season is done. If people yeah. pretty much say it was bullshit and not worth time, I'm not gonna go watch it. Sure. If people are like, oh, that was actually okay, then I'm gonna go watch it. <clears throat> so that's kind of what I've been doing now. Asylum was my favorite. It was balls to the walls crazy. It was aliens and everything. It was just fun. Um, I loved what it, you know, I loved the, the the exploration of mental health. I loved all that kind of stuff. Um, and then, yeah, at once Freak Show sort of, and then it just kind of went off the rails there. But anyway, <laughs> enough of my Ryan Murphy bashing. There is a great way to do these stories. Oh, yeah, Delicate. I read the book. The book's phenomenal. That's the one they're doing right now with Kim Kardashian. Mm. I'm, not, I'm not even bothering. <laughs> <laughs> But anywho, that's it for our, our stories. Um, you know, Angel and I always laugh about our tangents, but we always somehow come right to time because we are just at almost at the hour mark. So recommendations real quick. Um, I was just going to say, um, so Horror Fiend TV just did a review of this uh, film I recommended to them. Cobweb with, um, mm. oh my God, now I'm totally blanking on It's the guy that plays Homelander oh, in The Boys. Anthony Starr, I think his name is. Yeah. And then uh, from <laughs> uh, Lizzie Kaplan from Mean Girls. Uh, they play the parents, and it's just really fun. It's got this sort of uh, fairy tale, like dark fairy tale vibe to it that I really enjoy. Uh, so there's like this fantastical nature to it. There's some stuff that we've seen already um, in other movies, sort of like you were saying, Squall, like. A lot of stories are just sort of told in different ways. And so a lot of it's the same, but aesthetically it was fun and, and it really drew me in. So it's a fun watch if you haven't. So watch the movie and then you should go check out Horror Fiend's review for it. It's really good. I love how they shot it like from the child's perspective. So a lot of shots are like looking up at characters. Mm-hmm. Lots of things are larger than life. Which, which no, adds I... sort of that fairy tale vibe. Like it's just sort of you feel like a kid in this dark world. Yeah, I loved it. Oh man, and it made me feel so good because I love Lizzie Kaplan, and I mm-hmm. was just so disappointed by um, Castle Rock season two. Oh, it's like ah, oh. like my wife and I, we watched every single episode until the last one, and we just said, "Now nah, we're good." Oh. <laughs> we just jumped off there. Um, but my my shout out 
is I've been getting into these older books written by a man named Christopher Pike. So I've been reading a lot of Christopher Pike books. These are the two standouts that I really like. The Eternal Enemy, which is about an evil VCR, and <laughs> Master of Murder, which hits very close to home. It's about an author. He's like a wonderkin child. Yeah. Not to say that I am, but like he writes, <laughs> he writes, and all these awful things are happening. And they're both they're really fun. They're really quick reads. Um, if you like goosebumps but wanted something a little more mature, cool idea. Yeah. yeah. Angel has sung his praises before. I think those were the books that she grew up with. Versus oh. Goosebumps were the Christopher Pike books. Lucky her. They're like Fear Street, but like good. <laughs> a little bit better. Oh, I might have those. Yeah, I was reading some Fear Street. I might have to mosey on over to the Christopher Pike books. Mm -hmm. For sure. Okay. Well, that's it for uh, Coffee Crib for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Squaw. Of course. <laughs> it was a blast. <laughs> Um, and thank you everybody for watching. Uh, have a wonderful rest of your weekend and we will catch you next time. Take care.